would like your attention to get him full credit. Can I hear a pin now? Okay, I heard the pin. Thank you. Before we get on, just a few announcements. Um, Lunch and Arbor Marketing is a nonprofit, and we do ask for donations. Eric, could I ask you to grab a basket and start passing the basket around? Um, the recommended do donation is $3. Um, it's not obligatory. Um, it's only if you choose to. The money goes to cover hard costs, and because we have applied for nonprofit status we and not accepted yet, we can't pass on that money to charitable organizations, but that is the intention. Also, um, this is the last Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing for the summer. We're taking a break in August and the first week of September. We will be back on 8th of September and we're putting together a really, really cool program. It's, we're going to be um, featuring a digital stream for the next three months of the Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing Program. Megan McCann will be kicking off on September 8th and also, Megan McCann is um, starting up her pay-per-click club uh, August 3rd, 6 to 9 p.m. in Livonia. Um, first meeting's free, so if you'd like to go along, uh, check out www.payperclick.com for further information. Today's speaker is a cool and wacky crazy guy, Al McWilliams. Uh, a good friend of Derek's, and we're so pleased to welcome him to our program as our speaker. Um, Al's going to take a little different spin on some of the previous Lunch and Hour market, marketing topics that we've had before. And he's covering a first for the group. We're covering the 14 to 35 demographic group and how to market to them. And I think you're going to be in for a couple of surprises. So a big round of applause for Al McWilliams from the Clock. Default for a fun. Um, 
And, uh, and the reason why I don't do PowerPoints is I kind of don't believe in them. But I wanted to fit in because there's some other stuff I think that I'm going to talk about today that's totally different than maybe what everybody's used to hearing. And uh, I wanted to have at least one thing that I'm, uh, I'm part of the club here. So I made a PowerPoint. And um, I want to start off by saying that I don't think, especially in this age of new media and all this stuff, that nobody really has the answers. So the minute somebody comes in and says, this is absolutely the way to do it. They're not telling you the truth. So really what we say is, these are some things that we've done and they work. Um, we've seen a great response and they're logical. And when we don't know the answers, we actually go to the, you know, if, if we get hired to market to say, women from Puerto Rico who are 55, uh, we don't really know what that answer is. So we would go find some women from Puerto Rico who are 55 and ask them. Uh, and that's kind of seems basic, but. Uh, a lot of people don't do that. So, uh, holy crap, I made a PowerPoint, woo. Uh, let's, I think I pressed this button. No, not yet. Um, I just kind of gave away my shit. Hopefully no one read that fast. Uh, so, <laughs> let's, uh, I guess, my first activity, we're gonna actually do some market research uh, and pretend like you didn't read that. Uh, you didn't. Um, and uh, so, what would be a couple of, uh, of, of places you'd want to reach 14 to 35 year olds? Um, anyone can just say, where would you go? Today, I said I want to reach 14 to 35 year olds. Where would that be? Facebook or Twitter. Oh, okay, Facebook and Twitter. Um, what's that? Texting. Texting. Uh, ESPN. I, I like, I'm, so you might be hip to what I'm doing. Okay, so. Facebook and Twitter, texting, um, those are some common answers we're hearing today. Everybody who is on Facebook or Twitter who has ever twatted or face page, raise their hands right now. So then everybody who is, no, keep them up. You keep them up if you've been there. We're gonna do the put them down thing. So, and then if you're under 18, put your hands down. More. Yeah. <laughs> Under 18, put your hands up. If you're not more, I messed that up. Yeah. All right. So, if you're under 20, put your hands down. If you're under 30, 35. All right. So we have. Uh, all right. So, so that's we're looking at our demographic for Facebook and Twitter. You can, everybody can go down now. So, just to give you an idea of what we're looking at for Facebook and Twitter, um, the average age uh, of Facebook and Twitter is actually around 40. Um, and we have 61% of Facebook uh, over 35, and 64% uh, over of Twitter over 35. 0% uh, of me is over 35, uh, although in a few years that'll be different. But um, I. Uh, what is me? Me. <laughs> this guy. There is, there is nothing. There is nothing involved. It's over thirty-five. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so I think this is something that you know we kind of take for granted. It's, it's the same as Twitter. I just kind of changed it up to be uh, hilarious. <laughs> Okay, all right, right, well, so, uh, face page, same as Facebook, Twitter, Twitter. I just didn't want to be so repetitive from my life, so I just changed up. <laughs> okay, and I wrote the source up there really small so you guys could actually read it. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's from this website called Kingdom, uh, which does a great job analyzing data, and, uh, and uh, they use Google Ad Planner data and a bunch of different stuff to make these, these numbers. Um, which kind of fit from what we found uh, just doing what we do, which is ask questions and talk to people and, and find out just logically, hey, who is actually using these things and who is actually doing it? And you know, if you look around the room, a lot of people in here are doing that. Uh, not to say that they're not a good place to be, because obviously there are still you know, a large percentage of people who are younger who are using it. But, you know, we want to get over these assumptions, these broad assumptions that, hey, if you're going for young people, you need to be Twittering. Like, that's just not an obvious answer. So, um, 
I forgot what my new slides are, so I don't want to give anything away again. That was my big reveal joke. Uh, okay, so now it is, there is a reveal joke too on the next one. Um, so one more thing, if, if we are used to there are still people on it that we want to get to, uh, what, who are on the Twitters, who are some people that are like the big followed on Twitter? Like what are the big names on Twitter that people are actually listening to, that people do actually care about? Ashton Kutcher, perfect. Uh, so, who? <laughs> Ashton Kutcher from that '70s show and punk. Um, Mashable. Mashable. Okay. So what, are, what are some big like the top top twenty? Shit. Shit. Is that what he said? <laughs> People are following shit. I would follow shit. Shaq, right? Um, I, some, of the, some of the other top 20, we have uh, uh, Paris Hilton, Paris Hilton uh, Kim Kardashian, uh, Brittany. So when we go and we actually look at some of these top 20s, I just took a few of my favorites. Um, CNN, New York Times, Brit Brit, Kim K, uh, Ryan Seacrest, uh, Kim K, of course, Kim Kardashian, one of my favorite people, uh, Ashton Kutcher, uh, Conan. Um, so when we look, follow that down the line, all those people are actually famous from other media. They're famous from TV, they're famous from, the New York Times is an actual newspaper uh, still, I know. Um, Ryan Seacrest uh, is famous for pretty much every media that you can think of. Uh, he had the, I think he wakes up at 6 a.m. our time and you know never sleeps because he's not, he's actually a robot. Um, and, and so this is kind of just breaking down, and I wanted to restart everything and say the next bit of this we're going to go into, okay, so this is where we want to be, because these people are all getting famous from other things, and people are caring about them from other things. And we have this new challenge of, it used to be really easy to say, hey, we want 14-year-olds, we know they're watching MTV, let's put our ad on MTV, and we'll get the message out to them. Well, now it's kind of segmented, and, and that's kind of a disadvantage. You know, the internet's come along and spread everybody out, really, and it's not an easy one uh, one home run anymore. You kind of have to look at it as a bunch of smaller attacks and a bunch of smaller uh, efforts. Um, so what we use is something called GAS, G-A-S, uh, which stands for give a shit. Um, so, and this is why companies want to get younger faster, right? So. They say, they come to us and say, we want to get younger faster, uh, and this is why. Because young people, their give a shit pie chart, it looks a lot different than older people's give a shit pie chart. So they have, so basal, this is, um, you know, feeding yourself, things that you care about, things that you really give a crap about every day, for a young person look very different than for an old person. Your basal is kind of a smaller part, you know, you're not really worried, your parents are kind of taking care of feeding you. Uh, even if you're in college, your parents are kind of taking care of feeding you. Um, you know, and then you got your reputation, you know, if you're a high school kid, and I just threw some random stuff in there, you know, obviously when we're thinking about it for a specific campaign, we'll really narrow it down, but, uh, you know, some things that have gas for a, uh, for a, a young person that are going to be uh, school future, boys, girls, HJs, and then we have this big discretionary bubble, this orange thing that's uh, discretionary, right? And then when we go to the older graph, I did that, okay, it changes a lot. So that orange part that's discretionary got a lot smaller because basal, that mortgage, living, food, shelter, and that kind of thing, it's huge and it takes up most of what you care about every day. And then kids take up a huge chunk if you have kids and job. And then you have a little bit left for other stuff, doing it, mayonnaise. Uh, again, I just threw some random stuff in there. Um, and then you have this little sliver that's still discretionary. So in a lot of that, mayonnaise is an example of something that got firmed up when you were younger. And you have this big discretionary section of your time every day and the amount of concentration you give to different things. And you got into something like cars or uh, mayonnaise and you firmed that up. And so it, it left that discretionary 
pie and it got into your uh, more firmed up pie. And so as a marketer, when you look at your product, you don't want to go and fight for some of this firmed up stuff. You're fighting for that little sliver of, of discretionary, unless, can I go backwards on these? Yeah, cool. Um, you're, so when you have the young, the 1435, which obviously there's a range that orange gets slowly more narrow as you get towards 35, but um, you have a bigger section of orange that you're fighting for. Uh, and so that's why this is such an important demographic. Um, now, moving on to uh, how you get that, I, I like to use Apple as an example of someone who's done a great job of nailing, of going ahead and getting in while you're young, nailing themselves into that so that they become that mayonnaise when people are older. So, has anyone ever been to Apple's Facebook page? No one? Because they don't have one at all. Um, what about their Twitter account? They don't have one of those either. And yet, they are still rated as the number one uh, social media, social, whatever that site is that handles the social media stuff. They're always rated number one, most talked about, most whatever. And it has nothing to do with them using Facebook. They use other things to get cemented into that, that give a shit. And then when people got old, they were manics, right? So, um, so what we want to do is we want to become, whatever your product is, we want to take that and be, we want to cement in when you're young and become the man, right? So when we take a product like the Red Wings, um, whose audience was getting older, they were looking around the arena and they said, everybody in here is 40 to 55 years old and in 20 years they're going to be not coming to games anymore not buying season tickets anymore. So, well, there's little kids, right? There's really little kids, and then there's a big jump. But those little kids are coming with dogs. So, what we want to do is we want to get that group, that generation that's missing, and I mean, obviously there are exceptions that are going, but largely they're missing from the games. Um, is someone keeping track of my time, by the way? I'm not. Okay, cool. All right. So, um, so the Red Wings had a need, and they brought us in to to fill that gap. And what we looked at is the product that they were selling was hockey, winning hockey games is what the Red Wings were selling, and that was working for a really long time. Uh, but we found that people were getting used to winning hockey games, and so if they lost like two games a season, everybody got mad. Um, and we also found that, you know, maybe that wasn't really the product that that this that had gas for this demographic. Um, so we looked at the things, and you, there's, there's two ways, whatever your product is, whether it's deodorant or hockey or whatever, that you can look at getting into that orange pie which is either A, is your product something that has potential to be just on its own? Like Apple computers saw that they could actually be what you cared about. Alternatively, like if you were selling deodorant, are people ever really going to give a shit about deodorant? I don't, mm, maybe not. So what we want to do is attach ourselves to something that is on this pile already, like uh, boys, girls, issues, or something like that, which is a really great one to attach to. Um, so for the Red Wings, we looked at it and said, okay, your product is probably actually, for this demographic, what has gas for us, what people actually care about is having a great time in downtown Detroit with your friends, right? And meeting people and uh, you know, going to a game and instead of seeing somebody that kind of looks like you across the stadium, you're in the same section with someone who is just like you when you meet them. Um, so we set up a program for them, uh, and I think I did there we go. And our program for them was 600% of our goal for the first season. Um, and then I didn't really have anything else to say, so I think that's awesome. So I just added some stuff. Uh, because we blew our goals away. And that's ROI goals. That's not impressions. That's not uh, clicks. That is dollars in their pocket that we could directly, very directly tie back to our campaign. Um, and the way we did it was we uh, hit the streets. 
and put venues in each town where young people lived. So we had a bar in each town. We got everybody together at those bars to watch the away games. You could buy your tickets at that bar for the special games that we were focused, and we put everybody in the same section when they got there, as much as we could based on how late we started. This year, there will be a special section involved. Um, and uh, so when people came to the games, they had a great time. And uh, some of our returns were based on people that had gone to one or zero games the year before. And they went to 10 games last season because when they did go, they had a great time. There were party buses. Um, we attached to something that they already cared about. Uh, and I'll start saying cared now so that people can stop wincing when I swear. Um, and uh, so yeah, so that's, that's attaching to some, something that they already care about, uh, which was a good time and boys girls ace chase because we were everybody's meeting, having a good time, meeting perhaps their future husband or wife, or you know maybe just the next Thursday late night at the bar. Um, so what I want to do next, and uh, I kind of just whipped through everything, is take a product, and I chose Gillette because I think that they really have been doing uh, the same thing for a very long time. Um, Gillette, uh, and I couldn't find a picture of Beckham, so I just used myself. Uh, and what I wanted to do is, they've been doing razor blade commercials for razors, have literally been the same since I can remember. You know, it's like, do the mirror shave him. Sometimes he's famous, sometimes he's just real hot, and then he shaves, and then, it like some sweet computer graphics, do that, and it glows. And then I think there was one where there were like girls in bikinis like spraying shaving cream and giant whiskers, right? Um, so, you know, there's a little bit of connection there, I guess. Like if I use this razor, I might get girls in bikinis with big shaving cream or miniature girls in bikinis. I guess that is a connection. But, um, but really, it's just kind of remained unchanged, and it really doesn't speak to what I care about. And so if Gillette started a, if Gillette was on, I have no reason to talk about Gillette, because I am on Facebook, but I don't really, like, why would I be talking about Gillette, right? I mean, there's no reason for it, you know, why would I do that? And Old Spice is a pretty example of someone who killed it recently. Uh, with um, their, They did a, a TV campaign that then got earned impressions online. So. Um, if you guys ever remember, um, I speak of course of Mustafa, who I also have a photo of on here just for whatever reasons. Um, so Gillette, and I, what I want to do right now is think of us right now, a campaign for Gillette, and we can probably do it in like five minutes. So um, what do, what has gas for Gillette? What do people actually give a shit about when it comes to razor blades? That's it's a razor blade. What, what do we care about? Right, which is actually, which is boys, girls, age chase, right? I guess what it is. And sometimes maybe a little bit of professional, a little bit of career there too, because if I'm standing up here and I have razor burn all over myself, then you guys don't take me seriously, and, uh, which I'm sure you're doing. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so boys, girls, age chase, uh, and. So what can we say about what can we say about these Gillette razors? What's our message that we're delivering that hasn't been delivered before that that people can attach to that gas that will give that that thing that you care about looking good, boys goes HJs, that will it will make me believe that and actually say, hey, I want to use that razor instead of uh, I don't even know what another razor is. Um, Bic, Schick, anything with an ink. Uh, instead, this Gillette instead, is there a way we can say, prove to me instantly that this this message is going to be make me look better and, and get more HGs? Any? Right. Hot dates. This is very important. I care about that. I like a good hot date. Um, <laughs> But it's obviously not an easy thing to do. Uh, one of the things that I just quickly thought of is, um, and the dudes here will know what I'm talking about, um, when you spend, honestly, a box of these razor blades costs like $30. Um, 
and they last you like one week if you have a big uptick period like I do. Um, so have you noticed that there's a difference in your boxes of blades? Does anybody use these fancy blades? I, I do. Um, and, and, and you have a difference in the, the tolerances, right? So the tolerances of these blades, you buy one box of blades and they feel great and they're awesome, and you buy the next box of blades and it feels like it's fell right out of the box. Um, so this is a thing that really hasn't been brought up. And uh, if I were Gillette, or I was working for Gillette, which we're not, and um, if I was, I'd be probably, I, I'd be here on my jet pack that I bought with that account money. Um, so Gillette, when I would go to Gillette, I would say, all right, let's, this is, a, this is a big deal, and it's something that we can, this is, we can pull this thread and say, Gillette, because that, when those blades are dull, and if you have a beard like I do, if you get that dull blade, you drop $30 on this box of blades, and it sucks. Because you're replacing them every day, and the new ones that come out of that box, they usually, it usually goes, one box is this way, one box is good. You pull them out, and it's terrible. So what we'd say is, okay, Gillette, new program, We'll take the boxes back, send you a new box. If you get a bad box with bad tolerances, we pitch that like crazy. That's something that people will talk about. That is something that, that's, that's a basic message that people actually give a shit about. It's attached directly to something that affects their life every day. And it's a really simple message that we can get across. And someone that did that, for better or for worse, is Dunkin' Donuts uh, a couple years ago. Dunkin' Donuts just came out and said, we have the best coffee, period. And no one had said that before. No one had just come out and said, uh, it's us. They had no, and you know what, Dunkin' Donuts coffee, not that good. It's not that good. But they came out and said that, and I was in New York City a couple weeks later with my friend going, what, you wanna, I heard Dunkin' Donuts coffee was really good. Let's try that. We like coffee. Let's go try the Dunkin' Donuts coffee. And both of us went in there, and it wasn't any good. So it would have been a better campaign had they actually had good coffee. <laughs> but they got me to come in and try it. And to this day, when people are talking about coffee, I still hear, I heard Dunkin' Donuts has the best coffee. <laughs> and you know why? Because they said that. That's the only reason why. So that's a really simple version. And it only worked. It won't work again. So Starbucks can't come out now and say, like, well, we have the best coffee. Because <laughs> um, Dunkin' Donuts just hammered that one home, and it was awesome. So for Gillette to come out and say, you know what, our tolerances, our tolerances are so good that you're going to get a consistent blade every time you buy this box of Gillette razors. And if they're not send back used, or and we will send you a new box. Used or not used, and we'll send you a new box. And it's going to cost some money in uh, in fulfilling that, but honestly. That, those boxes of blades cost Gillette probably like 10 cents to make, and it cost me $30 to buy them. I'm guessing that their margins can handle sending out a few boxes of razor blades for free. And they will have, uh, you know, in 10 years, excuse me, they will have, you know, created themselves a nice uh, section of that pie there uh, as mayonnaise. Um, I guess that's, that's my whole thing. That's, I'm out of slides, so. <laughs> I, I, I closed with Beckham, as I think is, uh, is what you're supposed to say. Uh, did I fill up my time? Do I have more time? We have time for questions. Okay. Cool. But I mean, did I do the whole 30? Or did I supposed to do Oh, perfect. So, very good. So, a uh, big round of applause for you. And I'd like to open up for questions. So, um, Front here. So you talked about when you're um, someone comes to you and they want to target, they want to target 55 year old Portuguese women. And you said you go out and find Puerto Rican. Pardon me. Um, do you? How do you find those? Women? Do you reach them digitally? Do you have sources that you use personally or crack communities personally? It's really more about for for. So that's a really specific one. Uh, and obviously it's about budget, so when you're talking about market research is one of the most expensive things you can possibly do. So if we have a big budget, then we'll use a service usually, and we'll have, have them get us a list, and then we'll contact those people. Um, usually we're not working with that kind of budget. Usually it's, uh, let's find 
10 of these people, however we can to get a starting point. Um, and, you know, in the case of, say, uh, Cartoon Network, where we're making a TV show, and we have, we're making it for 12 to 14 year old boys, you know, I was one at one point, so I kind of have a starting point, but it's been a while. So, um, you know, in that case, we literally just call all our friends that have kids that age and have them all come in and tell us some stuff. Do you prefer, like, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, contacting someone as opposed to the person Yeah, yeah. And I mean, if, if it is digitally, it's a direct one-to-one -one communication, like an email or, or something like that, or a phone call, which I guess nowadays is technically digital, right? Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it's because it's a very, I prefer this, and again, there are no solid right answers. The only thing I understand is that what we do works. Um, I prefer the more detailed information as opposed to, I would rather hear a lot of information from 10 people than a little bit of information from 6,000. So, um, and that's just because I think that we can analyze it pretty well and use logic. And there's a, there's a few basic um, underlying human nature characteristics that kind of drive all these things. And if we can, if you notice that my, my gas chart kind of really has a few main things in common, <laughs> They're all pretty basic to humans. Um, and those were just random, by the way. Like those items on those charts, I just kind of randomly pulled out. They weren't really specific to anything, um, other than mayonnaise, obviously. Uh, OK, that's, that suffice. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can, I can do that. I have a question. OK. Yeah. Have you done any campaigns specifically geared towards college students? I think that the, yes, the Red Wings was, um, although we were everybody, it wasn't specifically college. Uh, I, a lot of our customers were college. So U of M instantly jumped out of that. They instantly called us and said, the grad school at U of M called and said, we want to, can we get more buses? So, uh, yes. Was there a, a detail on that that I was supposed to give? Um, no? Yeah. Yes, we did, we have. <laughs> Um, I like the, the gas idea and the pie chart and everything. And I was wondering if you could sort of reverse think and talk about the Old Spice campaign. And I guess how that relates to gas and why it's so huge, you know, and uh, generating. Yeah. Uh, so the question is about the Old Spice campaign, um, which I've been reading about because the results are coming out right now. Um, of when this campaign actually, we know it had a lot of views and a lot of hits. Should I come up there? Could you explain what the Old Spice campaign is for those yes. who might not? Yes. Okay. So Old Spice did um, it. Well, they launched in the Super Bowl. This agency in uh, in Seattle, I think, uh, did a Super Bowl ad with this gentleman named Mustafa, who um, was a wide receiver, ex wide receiver, and they did this amazing piece of photographic trickery that was hilarious, super hilarious. It was for a product called Red Zone Body Wash, which is targeted to young men. Um, and uh, they launched during the Super Bowl. It was one of the most popular Super Bowl commercials. And then they put it up online. I believe it had 12 million YouTube views pretty fast. Um, it's now grown. And then they did a couple additional follow-up campaigns. So it's been going on since February. and. Um, it won a Can Lion for uh, digital and uh, television uh, film commercial. Uh, Can Lion is the big ad awards, uh, the biggest ones. Um, so they, two sets of numbers have come out, and both by the same group of people, so I really don't know what to believe. Now the actual results, the ROI of this have come out. Sales of Red Zone the actual specific product that they were advertising in that spot, the initial numbers were down 7% after the whole campaign. Now today, a new set of, that was last week, today a new set of numbers came out for the overall brand that say the overall brand is up like 112% since a year ago. Um, I literally just read that before I came down here, so I haven't really had time to think about why those two numbers are so different. A lot of it to me is maybe that the body wash itself tanked, but that spot did 
how many of you who've seen the commercial thought that commercial was for Old Spice and not for Red Zone Body Wash? Right, so I think that that might be part of the thing in that numbers. Um, but so the question was about if we could reverse think that and think about why that worked. Um, that worked because the content of that commercial, that original Super Bowl commercial that they did, uh, was brilliant and everybody wanted to watch it. It was a piece of art that everybody wanted to watch and it was attached to uh, Boys and Girls H Chase. So it was a brilliant piece of content that they had tied back to if you use this, your woman, you can be like this dude. Because the whole thing is this dude being the perfect man for a woman and doing all these perfect things. Um, so the commercial, he's talking to women, but he's really talking to the dudes sitting next to them. Um, so they're tying it to the Boys Girls H Chase, uh, which is a very common thing to tie to. In my mind, the, the reach between those two is kind of far for that spot, but it did get huge earned impressions, like in the billions of earned impressions that they didn't pay for, which are, is always a bonus. Um, but again, the ROI is still kind of up in the air on that product. Uh, so yes, to reverse think that, Boys and Girls Ace Chase was the, was the gas, um, and the traction was this hilarious, amazing piece of art that you simply had to watch three times and forward to people, right? Um, and that's where you get the butt. Without that initial Super Bowl, the mainstream media kickstart, that likely would have never happened. I mean, it might have if they just made that and put it up on YouTube. There would be a possibility that that would have happened. But you really, they really, what gave it the 12 million overnight was that everybody saw it on something they were already watching, and then that kind of jumps. But we did a viral video for the Red Wings, and our jump start was that we had a player in it. So that got us that first 20,000, and then got it. You know, you need something to, to kind of guarantee your, your thing. Otherwise, I was thinking it was quite experienced someone beforehand that we want things to be repeatable. So when you see a viral video that was a huge success, um, it's not necessarily repeatable. Like, why is this video of someone getting kicked in the crotch get 12 million and this one get three, right? Um, you really, there's no way to repeat that. So, uh, so we always look for, so for Old Spice, the way to repeat it is throw it up on TV again where you know you're gonna get 35 million people seeing it and talking about it at least off of that. So, does that answer your question? So let's just say you get the jump start, right? You right. get a good start. How would you actually keep going, keep it building it, or just keep it constant at least over, let's say, a six-year period to a year? Because that's why it's really hot, right? Right. Um, for Old Spice, I think it's a great example because that's something that you normally wouldn't care about, right? It would be deodorant, body wash, uh, isn't really in your, as a dude, I don't really care about that much. If I don't smell every day, that's good for me. Um, <laughs> So I would say to keep it going, you know, build, building a personality around that. So they've got this personality going. It's the Old Spice guy now. Nobody knows that his name is Mustafa, uh, which I've forgotten if it's his first or last name at this point. Um, so Old Spice guy, we have this personality. We can get people invested in that. Um, are you ever going to be... Old Spice, like Apple has, are you ever going to be your own piece of slice of the pie? Likely not. You know, there's not going to be people running around. Um, old, you know, putting Old Spice stickers on the back of their Old Spice and stuff. I don't think it's going to happen. So they really just need to focus. In my mind, they would focus on um, on keeping that attachment between. Uh, them and the things that are already on that pie slice, which you know, one of them, especially for young people, is price. And that's something that's, you know, value and price are very solid in that pie of things that I care about. Um, especially when it comes to commodity items like deodorant and body wash, you know, if I'm, and razor blades for that matter. You know, if, uh, if they're both the same, they both keep me smelling fresh. And, uh, and they, I haven't noticed a difference in the number of HJs, then I'm probably going to get a cheaper one, right? Um, so that's how I would keep it going, is make sure that my value is in line and make sure that on top of mine in the grocery store, if there's 10 things on the shelf and I just grab, you know, I'm not thinking about it, 
because there's the not thinking about it customers too. Anyway, so getting into the details of the campaign, and if I just mumble not up here, I'll probably make mistakes. So it's not the point. I can ask kind of a dumb question. Um, HJs, are you referring to high school and junior high? Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. And mayonnaise, can you give me a few examples of mayonnaise, please? Uh, that was just something I had it up there as uh, originally when I was making it. It was, uh, you know, hobbies and stuff you're into um, that you got into when you were younger. Uh, but I thought that was kind of boring, so I changed it. Like, it would be funny if somebody was really in mayonnaise, right? So, but yes, HJs, high school and junior high, that's totally what I'm talking about. Not hand jobs. Okay. I'm Nancy. I know. Fine. Um, I just had a question about sort of attention span of this age demographic versus other day age demographic in terms of how long you do something and then you have to go on to something else and how long somebody's going to actually be paying attention to care and then, you know, is there is there a difference or, I mean, do you have a certain time period that you usually run a campaign when you say, like, this is when it's going to matter if it's not going to hit at that point then it's just really not going to go anywhere? Just have a question about that. Yeah. That's, I guess I haven't thought about that. No. Um, I think simply, like, for instance, with Old Spice, I just read that they're totally, they probably aren't going to use Mustafa anymore, right? Because they think that people don't care anymore. And again, that's totally opinionated. I personally would like to see, obviously not that same joke, because I think that joke is kind of running out, but um, you know, I think that, that actor is awesome and I think they should use him a lot. Um, most things he looks like me. But the, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really is all across the board depending on the age. Uh, the younger, that, that orange section of the pie that's discretionary, when you're younger, you're rifling through what you care about so fast, you know? And then as you get older, that starts to sell it up. And I think that what you're really trying to do is just get into that enough times when somebody's young so that when it does sell it up, you're a part of it. And, uh, you know, uh, with Dickies, um, we did something new every time. It was, we'd run a campaign, we'd do a mini promo, we'd do a, a party on South by Southwest, and then the next thing was a reality show, and then the next thing was product placement in a, some other reality show, and then the next thing was. So, you know, I don't have an answer to that question. I'm sorry, Nancy. I'll think about it, though, and email you or something. I might be wrong when I do, though. <laughs> Terrific. Al, thanks so much. A uh, round of applause for Al. Thanks for coming along. It's now time to pass the mic. This is a, uh, an opportunity for you to stand up, give your name, your business, your occupation, what you're looking for, or an ask. And we're going to start off at the front of the room. Hand up. Um, Evan Stewart from ProQuest, and uh, this is my first time here. I actually went to high school with Derek, so um, I think I founded this. So I uh, talked to him two weeks ago at our 20 year reunion, and I promised him I'd come check it out. So, here I am. Hi, my name is Mary Shindell. Um, I've been here several times. Um, but today I wanted to mention an event coming up in August, uh, August 17th, American Business Women's Association, uh, Maya Chapter is having their monthly meeting, and uh, we're featuring um, our own internal speakers, but they're talking about Women's Instructional Network. And WIN, Women's Instructional Network, is a feature of APWA that I don't think most other professional organizations have. And so if you're interested in that or like to learn more about that, please come to our meeting. It's at Weber's Inn and you can learn more about it on our website, which is abwa-maia.org. Well, uh, hi, I'm Michelle Kreisak. Um, I'm new to the Ann Arbor marketing community. Um, as a matter of fact, Mary told me about this lunch, and so it's the first time I'm here. So I'm hoping to get acquainted with everybody and uh, be a regular at this lunch. Thank you. Hi, I'm 
Diane Sheldon who um, I'm with WSI Marketing for Results. I help small and medium-sized companies uh, build online credibility and generate leads, and um, I really look at the ROI to help them do that. So if you know any companies that need help doing that, they can come talk to me. Hi, I'm Mike, one with Sandra Training, and uh, I should talk to Diane. We work with small and medium-sized companies. When they have leads, what they do with them. So we're going to talk to Diane. Hi, I'm Rachel Schreiber, and I work with uh, Jay Bell and Associates. I write original web content for his company. We specialize in SEO placement. I assist with uh, first page, first position placement. Hey, I'm Sonny. I'm the creative director of Homescene.com. It's F-O-R-M-C-I-N-E.com. We are a magazine in Ann Arbor that cover lifestyle, fashion, and our demographic is 18 to 35. So if you want more information, let me know. Hi, my name is Lev Wood, and I uh, work for a company called MS2. We're uh, database application designers here in Ann Arbor. My name is uh, Joey Silvian. I have a couple of companies called Virtual Interactive Agency and Social Orgs. I do social media and marketing. Hi, I'm Adrian Forbes. I'm also at MS2. I'm a senior software engineer, and I also help people on the side of websites. Good afternoon. I'm Kathy Szynski, a marketing consultant with RJ Conlon Marketing and Design in Ann Arbor. And part of uh, helping you with your business is going through our MAP program, Marketing Assessment and Action Plan, where we'll learn more about your best customers and work with you to reach more of them. Hi, my name is Liz Blanco. I'm a graphic designer and I work in the communications department for the University of Michigan, Hobbit College of Architecture and Urban Plant. I'm Amber LaCroix. I'm Liz's colleague. This is Liz's third day on the job. <laughs> um, I've been wanting to come to this um, communications director for the college. It's primarily master students. We do have an undergrad program in architecture. And I've been doing ground cover, and so I'm finally kind of coming out to reconnect on 1845 demographic. And I'm a former colleague of Eric Rodriguez, so thanks, Eric, for giving me on the buttons. Hi, I'm, I'm Jean Lieberman, um, and this is my first time here. Thank you, Mary. And um, I do a couple of different things. I uh, have an organizational organization, Personalized Productions. We focus on particularly project management and tools with project management, Microsoft Project, and we do some training and consulting, and I'm always looking for people, and um, occasionally we do some freebies around. I think we got a couple coming up. If anybody goes to our website, personalizedproductions.com, and if that doesn't work well, I also play in a band, and maybe Rockstar will be my thing. So come see us, fill the moments. We play around town. I'm Mark Olivier, and I do affiliate marketing. I'm Leda from Affordable Computers. We provide um, refurbished computers and laptops, desktops, and so on. I'm Rich Austin. Uh, I'm with Salem Training. I work with uh, Mike Wynn. And like he alluded to, um, entrepreneurs and, and business owners come to us uh, not because they're not proficient at what they do, but because when it comes time to put the sales hat on, it doesn't come natural. So we help them uh, get confident with that. Hey everybody, I'm Doc Klein with Fleming Artists and Box Music. Um, <clears throat> we're actually in the, the booking industry and a lot of the presenters and promoters we work with are aging and getting older and just like Al's description with the Red Wings, it's like there's a big gap between the old school promoters and the new school promoters and we're trying to target those so that we have a sustenance, you know, booking consistently for artists, you know, written now and in the future. So it's interesting in targeting them and getting them acquainted to us and all they hear is William Morris, CAA, there's plumbing, you know, right here in Ann Arbor. So it's interesting because we're trying to target that market as well and trying some new things. So a lot of Al's examples are really cool. Thanks. Hi, my name is Jane Delancey, and I work for a company called Delancey Design, which is me. Um, I was thinking about how I've been doing this for 20 years and what does that mean. What it means is right now I'm working on um, graphics for a trade show display for a 40 by 20 foot trade show booth. So um, that's one thing. And then a couple of uh, websites for individuals and some direct mail 
What it means is I've done a lot of stuff <laughs> um, and can um, use design to promote your mark to enhance your marketing needs or your marketing results. Uh, Jane Delancey, Delancey Design. Hi, I'm Yasin Isan. I'm currently an intern with Wiz Web Design. And I'm looking for a bachelor thesis here in this area, somehow related with business process, uh, engineering, uh, analysis, or improvement. So if you have anything in mind, if you know any company here in the area, just let me know. Thank you very much. Hi, Mike Nato with Affordable Computers here in town. We're over on South Industrial. Work with Lado over there. And uh, as she said, we provide high quality corporate technology equipment and the service to go with it. I'm Wayne Aker, I'm a freelance web developer. My name is Eric Wardman, and I'm a marketing and accounting student at Eastern Mission. I'm Kai Kai, and I'm a <coughs> information systems student over at Eastern Mission. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carly Pacini. Um, I, this is my second time here. I just relocated back to Michigan from New York. I was going to NYU to get my master's in music business. So I'm looking for some employment, music business, performing arts, gigging, whatever. So if you have any tips, please let me know. Thanks. Hi, my name is D.B. Gopal. I just moved to Ann Arbor. Until a few months ago, I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Zambia. And I'm interested in something in sales or marketing, so if you have any suggestions or tips, I'd love to hear them. I'm Kyle Stoop. I'm with uh, Ann Arbor Radio, Ann Arbor's 1071, W4 Country, Sports Talk 1050, and Business Talk 1290. Um, I'm a marketing consultant. Uh, I also work with um, clients on the local end. If you'd like to speak to one of my very satisfied, very handsome clients, Talk to Mr. Ross Johnson right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent intro. <laughs> Ross Johnson, 3.7 Design, which is a web design agency. Um, and I also teach web design at Washington Community College and happen to be a huge fan of Mandy's, so I'd like to be a real world example. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ellie Ganell, and I work at the Cary Town Concert House. Um, I'm also a flute player. Um, I'm going to be playing with a group called Opera on Pack at Frenchies in Ypsilanti next Tuesday. Um, we do, you know, opera and classical music um, in sort of an informal bar type setting. So it's sort of a unique uh, live music experience. Uh, the first Tuesday of every month. So uh, this next one is this coming Tuesday at 8:30. Come early, grab dinner, and enjoy some great music. Hey, I'm Eric Rodriguez, Client Services Manager with Ingenix Digital Marketing. We do web design, SEO, analytics, uh, social media marketing, and much more. So if you need that, come see me. I'm Roger Rail. I uh, videotape here and other events. I'm an independent information consultant, and I help with your information needs, whether it's video or Google Earth mashups. Uh, this weekend is the Maker Fair in Detroit. Anybody know about that? And uh, it's where people come together and make things out of, well, they make unusual things out of ordinary things, I guess. Um, in conjunction with that, we're having an Ignite program, which is 20 slides, 15 seconds each, five minute presentation. There's 12 people. Even though it was last minute, we got some really good speakers. Um, and that'll be Saturday night. And this is all at the Henry Ford Museum in Detroit. So just look for that, um, Maker Fair, and then the Ignite program will probably be up within a day or two. Uh, we're finalizing the speaker list right now. And I'll be videotaping that, although it won't be streamed live like it is today because the Wi-Fi there is a little shaky. But uh, So if you can't make it, you'll be able to see it later on after we edit it. But uh, if you can make it in person, I think it would be worthwhile. Hi, I'm Mike Lee. Um, I'm currently interning at Ingenix Digital Marketing. Hi, I'm Tiffany Reisner. I'm part of the Genex cluster over here. Um, I, I do social media um, for my internship as well as SEO, press releases, stuff like that. Um, I also do a little bit of social media for a nonprofit called Port Out. Um, right now we're focusing on Haiti, and the founder is right next to me, so I'll let her tell you a little bit more about that. Um, I'm Carly Green. This is my first time here. Um, yeah. Port Out is a nonprofit, grassroots nonprofit. We just started up a couple months ago. We're doing um, biosand water filters, both purchasing and building them ourselves. 
and um, bringing them over to Haiti. We're following disaster relief areas, so right now we're focused in Haiti. So um, go there every few months for a couple weeks and do research, and um, we're bringing teams and whatnot. So yeah, so I wanted to come here and kind of get some ideas about uh, social media marketing and stuff for our fundraising, web design, all that kind of stuff. So, I'll show you. Hi, I'm Nancy Shore from the Get Downtown program, and we help do something that people care about a lot, which is coming downtown without having to pay for parking. And we help employers and employees. We provide all kinds of services. We have a GoPass, which if you're a downtown employer, allows you to ride all the buses unlimited for $5 per employee, incredible deal. Zip cars, bikes, walking, all the fabulous things that make you healthy and have you have fun while you are on your commute. So if you need more information, get downtown.org. Hi, Amy Ma. I do several things. Um, among them, a super green uh, technology. And in addition, um, I'm developing some children's uh, games and websites in multiple languages. Um, and I'm looking for like a uh, part-time personal assistant if someone is interested. I wasn't quite ready for that. I thought you guys were going to talk a little bit. Um, uh, my name is Roger Rakowski. Um, I am, uh, I guess the, the new term now is in transition. Um, so I uh, have uh, 15 years marketing experience. Um, and I, I wanted to kind of go, I, I started, this was my second meeting. Um, and I wanted to see a lot of the, the newer stuff out there because I guess um, I'm, becoming, I'm becoming older now and I, I'm aging myself. I'm actually, my background's in old school marketing when we actually did print uh, stuff and read and hold. Um, so I've got a, a large background in print uh, production, uh, both with Borders Group and I also worked at Blast Communications. Um, I also do some freelance graphic design um, to kind of keep myself busy in the meantime. And uh, like I said, I come the second time and, and despite Al's presentation, I'm going to come back. <laughs> and we actually did a great job. So. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know me or not, but. <laughs> I'm Carter Sherline from Print Studios, and I'm a commercial editor and portrait photographer, which means everything except for weddings. I'm Dee Davy, Creative Ideas Marketing. I help overstretched and under-resourced marketing managers get marketing projects off their desk without the investment of a full-time resource. Please keep me in mind if you hear of anyone who requires part-time contract marketing assistance. D. Davey, Creative Ideas Marketing. I'm also the voice of Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing. I have been working with Derek on um, pulling together the speaker program, and it's been my pleasure to um, work with everyone within the Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing team. And I, as this is our last meeting for the summer, we're taking a break through August and the 1st of September. We're back again 8th of September, kicking off with Megan McCann talking about a really new hot topic, Facebook ads. Uh, Facebook are, are getting into the advertising game, and Megan's going to give us some insight into that. Um, we're pulling together a really interesting digital stream of programs for the coming three months, commencing in September. And we're also going to have a special guest speaker talking about the World Cup. But I uh, won't say any more about that. Before I close off the meeting, I would like to acknowledge some of the people who have been participating in keeping Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing going for this last two and a half years. Um, as I call your name, would you please stand and so we can acknowledge you. Wayne Aker developed our website, does a lot of background work for us. Thanks, Wayne. We have Ross Johnson, who is responsible for the beautiful design of Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing. Um, really, really good. Roger Rail, videotaping relentlessly on video streaming. Eric Rodriguez who supports us on an ongoing basis. And in absence today, we have Stacy Pollock, who is our treasurer and also our welcomer. Um, Stacy is on holiday, couldn't make it. And Megan McCann from Ann Arbor Chamber, 
who works in putting together the email blasts every week, uh, working with our sponsors. Um, this month's sponsor, Megan McCann, with uh, uh, the Paper Click Club. We also have with us Diane Sheldon Q, uh, who works with me in publicizing and advertising the events. And there's somebody else in the Robert. back. We've got Rob Shannon, who's putting together the uh, nonprofit status paper mountain yeah. and dealing with um, the IRS. Have I caught everybody here? And of course, Derek Maribon, the founder of Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing. So our thanks to everyone here for joining us through the year, for your support, your encouragement, and we'll look to see you again September 8th for the kickoff of Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing. See you then.